Five steps to remember muscle origins and insertions. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and this video is a concise and short training so you know exactly how you can remember any origin and insertion of any muscle. Now this is especially important if you're working towards your level two or level three anatomy exam. So for level two, you've got to learn 26 different muscles. For level three, you've got to learn 50 of them. So first of all, thankfully it's not every single muscle in the body because it's a lot to remember. And then layer on that, not only knowing the name and what the muscle looks like, but you've then got to know the origin and the insertion of that muscle and the difference between them. You ought to then know the location and the action and the joints that are crossed. So there's a lot to remember. And as a result, some people really struggle with remembering the muscles, mostly because they're trying to learn it in a way that doesn't suit their learning style or the fact that the muscle moves and they're not really taking all of that in, on, on board as part of the memory process. So I'm gonna share with you five steps. And in order to do this, I'm actually gonna use our muscle memory sprint flashcards to help. The reason why I love these so much is because they're really, really clear. And at the beginning, there's a how-to guide and I'm gonna use this to help you. And there's five steps inside this how-to guide. Now, the very first part of it is to take time. Step number one is take time. You need to schedule out some time to do your revision. Now, for muscles, if you've got 50 muscles you need to learn, you don't want to try and do all of that inside a 60 minute revision session because your brain is going to feel like it's going to explode. <laughs> You're going to instead be much better if you can chunk this into the relevant number of chunks per the number of muscles you need to learn. So you go, right, I'm doing level three anatomy. I've got 50 chunks of muscles that I need to remember, 50 individual muscles. So how do I chunk that into 15 minutes so that I can just spend 15 minutes doing one muscle and then go away and do something totally different? This works really well if you're doing this, say, on your lunch break or you set up a routine to do it every day or a couple of times every day. And it works very well. So first of all, schedule time. Once you've scheduled time, step two is about having a clear image and knowing the name of the muscle. So I'm going to use these muscle memory sprint flashcards. And it's got like all 50 muscles in here for the level three, which are mapped to uh, VTCT, Active IQ, YMCA. So all the leading awarding bodies ready for your exam. So you don't have to go onto Google and start finding tons of muscles and wasting time looking for things because they're all here waiting for you, basically. So this let's in fact let's take quadriceps as the one we're going to use today so there are four quadriceps we're just going to look at the rectus femoris so this is one of the muscles within a group now when we say there's 50 muscles to learn this is one of those 50 so we've got a clear flash card just for the rectus femoris so that's the first step is you go well what's the name so rectus femoris and let's get a clear image so that i can see it that's the step two. It's quite straightforward. The next thing we need to do is to find out the origin and insertion in our own words. This is so key. If you can do this in your own words, then you will get it. And this is usually the step that people miss out. So step three is looking at the image and going, well, where does it originate and where does it insert? Now, here's a tip. It will cross at least one joint because that's the role of the muscle to make that joint move. So if my origin is up here, I might, in my words, go, oh, OK, well, it's kind of like right up on the pelvis somewhere. In my words, it's right up on the front of the pelvis. I know it's the front of the leg, the quadriceps right on the front here. Whereas my insertion, I could be like, well, it looks like it kind of goes below my knee. That would be my word. So I'd be like front of the pelvis and below my knee. So I've got an origin and an insertion. Again, this is why I really like these flashcards and what we've done with them is we've got the clear image but then we stuck an O next to the origin an I next to the insertion so you can't get them mixed up and what we've done with all the peripheral muscles is use our Hoji formula so that you know that the origin is the one closest to the heart then it crosses a joint and then you've got the insertion afterwards and that works for the peripheral muscles which will really really help you 
So we've got this in our own words to start off with. Now, the final part of step three is to then double check where you're at with your origin insertion. So I said my origin looked like it was on the front of the pelvis. But when I look at the wording, it's anterior inferior iliac spine. Well, that is the front of the pelvis. So the iliac spine is on the ilium, which is the big butterfly shape of the pelvis. Anterior means the front. Inferior means the lower edge. And it's on the iliac spine, which is the spine of that ilium. So I go, well, it's the front bottom part of the ilium, the spine bit of the ilium, which is my AIIS. That's the origin point of the rectus femoris. But you can see if you try and learn that in this language, it's going to be really confusing. So instead, put your hand on that area and be like, that's the front bottom side of my, or like the front lower part of my pelvis. And you've kind of got that clear understanding of where it is. Insertion point, same thing applies. Anterior upper tibia via patella. Like I just said it was below the knee, which would still work because I know where it is. So I know below the knee, but that's in my words. Anterior means the front upper side of the tibia. So the tibia is the big one of the bones on the lower leg. Then I'm going via the patella. So it's kind of like, oh, it's the top and the top. Uh, so it's the top front of the tibia is the point where it inserts. So you've so step number three is do it in your own words and then just double check exactly what it is. So, you know, and you could recognize where they are. So that's step number three. Step number four is about understanding the fiber direction. So what I want you to look at on here um, is that, can you see the fiber direction? So there's little lines on the drawing themselves and this shows the direction of fiber. Now this gives you massive clue as to what has to happen because if your direction of fiber is running top to bottom, then you know that when that muscle contracts, it's going to contract and shorten lengthways. If the muscle fibers kind of fan shape out, when it contracts, it's going to condense the fan shape. So you can kind of start to predict how that muscle moves. So instead of looking at it as this 2D image, instead it starts to take place. You start to imagine it and moving. So we now know the name, which, uh, which was the second step. We know it, the origin insertion in our own words, which was the third step. And now we know the fibre direction, which was the fourth step. The fifth step is to look at the joint action that would occur if this muscle got shorter. Remember, part of that was the fibre direction. So if the fibre direction is top to bottom, then my action as that occurs is bringing my, or my insertion towards my origin. So I end up with that action. So for rectus femoris, my action's written down here, hip flexion, and knee extension. Notice that there is an action for each of the joints that are crossed. Sometimes there's multiple actions per joint cross depending on the muscle fiber direction. So step number five, what is the action? Well, hip flexion. Okay, so that's me bending at the hip. So bringing my leg up towards my hip. Well, what's my knee extension? Well, that's if I straighten out my leg, straighten out my knee. So I want you to now do that action as step number five. So you literally have hip flexion, knee extension, play with both of those and really feel it happening in that muscle. So if that's my rectus femoris, can I feel it contract? Can I feel it when it relaxes? And then the more you do that inside those 15 minutes of your study, the more you're going to learn and know what this is. So that whenever you have a question on exam day that says, mentions rectus femoris, you can literally close your eyes and commit this to memory and visualize it and go, oh yeah, I remember seeing it. It was like on the front top of the pelvis and then it went down and it was below my knee. So it crossed my hip and my knee. And I know that there was an action for each of them. And if they get towards each other, it's knee extension, it's hip flexion. So you can start breaking it down because you know about the muscle. It's not that you're trying to remember it word for word for word but it's that you know about the muscle, you know how it feels, you know what it's like to move that muscle. And that's what will help you remember it, those five clear steps. So you can grab those five steps and follow along um, with this video. So there is a link below if, you've, if you're watching this on YouTube or if this is inside the blog, you'll be able to see the steps that are alongside this.
Also, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see three mock questions that will relate to learning the muscles and the location and the origins and insertions. So use those three mock questions to test your knowledge where you can also download some more if you want to. Now, if you really like the idea of using these muscle memory flashcards to be able to really help you learn and understand exactly how to remember the origin and insertion of all 50 muscles for level three, all 26 for level two, then all you need to do is click the link that is with this video and you can also find out about joining us for the flashcards. And they arrive digitally so you can then get them made up or you can keep them on your phone if you prefer. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope that this is going to help you understand how to remember all of this key information about origins and insertions, but also make your revision much more enjoyable as you have a clear strategy to follow. And make sure you drop a comment below telling me what your big takeaway is from today. Have a great day.